This is Josh Beiser from GameWisdom.com. Hope you enjoy this critical thought, your daily discussion on game design. And be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and you can pitch future critical thought topics. Alright, we got a quick critical thought for you today. This is going to be more of a debate than I think anything else. And this is the topic of how much information should a game give the player? As we've talked about many times before, there is a very fine line between basically over explaining the game to the point that it either plays itself or the player doesn't make any decisions, or the game is so obscured that the player will not be able to figure things out unless they result to a strategy guide or a let's play or anything along those lines. And this is another one of those big debates. Probably not in the top three, but maybe in like the top 10 or 15. And part of the challenge of this is, as we've talked about, if you want the player to become engaged by your game, then they need to be able to make decisions, or I'm sorry, make interesting decisions, to paraphrase Sid Meier. If all the choices have been made by the player, then what's the point of playing the game if they're just going through the motions? But you need to give the player enough information to be able to make those decisions. If all they're doing is just pushing buttons and trying to make sense out of things, then yes, the game may be complicated or may require a lot of thinking, but if the player doesn't know what they're doing, then it's not really playing the game. As we've talked about multiple times before, when it comes to action versus abstraction, or action-based games like Demon Souls and Ninja Gaia, etc., versus abstraction like RPGs, strategy games, and so on, Action games are a lot easier to learn because of the one-to-one -one feedback. I push a button while I play Demon's Souls, I know exactly what it's going to do. If an enemy swings a sword or a spear or whatever at me, I can uh, realize what they're doing and make an according action because everything is done very instantaneously. If I'm playing a strategy game like Europa Universalis and the game's asking me to choose a... Wow, it's been a long time since I tried playing it. Uh, choose a uh, person for your cons for your council. How am I supposed to know what to look for if I've never done this before? And as we've seen over the last few years, there have definitely been games that have been going for very deep or very obscured elements in their design. It's about the player trying to figure out how the game works and go from there. A good example of this from recently would be something like My Summer Car which people are describing as like the Dark Souls of Car Repair, if you want to imagine that one. But when it comes to giving the player the information they need to understand the game, this is a very tricky subject, especially if your game is dealing with obscure or otherwise um, not, uh, otherwise uh, mechanics that aren't easily, aren't easy to follow. So, Let's say, for instance, we have a game where the rules stipulate that if I am jumping and the enemy is in the air, I do triple damage. And you would normally not attack the enemy while you're in the air because it's harder to block. But if the player is never given any idea that a rule like that exists in your game, how is this player supposed to know that that is a mechanic? A really good example of this from an actual game would be from Battle Brothers. If you missed the plays of it on the channel or Twitch stream, it is a tactical strategy game, pretty much think like Fantasy XCOM in a sense. And one of the things about the game is you have melee and range weapons. And range attacks have a chance of hitting your friends or not hitting the target depending upon what's surrounding it. You basically need a line of sight to get an accurate read. One of the rules of the game, which is not mentioned anywhere in the tooltips or in the game itself, is that if a range unit is directly behind a friendly melee unit, or just a friendly unit in general, they will be able to shoot their shot essentially through the line. So they don't, they'll still get line of sight even though it's being blocked, but it only works when the range unit is in the square directly behind a friendly. Now, what I just described, if I didn't tell you that, or if you didn't look that up, there is no way you would have figured that one out on your own, because how would you be able to uh, understand that rule due to the fact that it's an abstracted element? And that's kind of where that distinction between giving the player too much or not enough information. 
when we're dealing with abstracted concepts, either formulas or systems from the game, or unique mechanics that are only in this one specific title, you have to give the player at least the basic understanding of what's going on. One of the things I really liked about the Talos Principle is that the game pretty much spells out what each of the tools do. From that um, tripod thing that uh, disrupts electronics, to the machine that lets you create a, um, I guess a duplicate of yourself. All these have an explanation in the world. You're not going to be given one of these new items and then just say, okay, try using it. Instead, the game at least presents you with the basic mechanics, and that way, you can at least understand what the foundation is, and then it's up to you to figure out, okay, if this is what it does, how do I take this further? How do I, you know, bend or twist the rules to fix or to solve these puzzles? Now, a bad example is from what I played recently, or excuse me, recently is from Rain World, which there is a video spotlight up on the channel of that. Rain World features a lot of obscure mechanics that the game makes no attempts at trying to explain to you even what the basics of the game are. The tutorial, which is about 20-30 seconds long, basically runs through how to control your character, how to jump, how to pick up and eat items, and then how to hibernate. That's it. Everything else, especially about some of the more obscure rules and systems of the game, are left uh, completely unknown to the player. For instance, there's doors that remain locked until the correct number of days or cycles in game have passed. And again, there's no way you would have known that. You could see the door, you see the symbol on it, but there's n nothing that really connects two to two or one to one there. A really big example while we were playing on the stream was there are these flying bugs that are that basically knock the player or shove them around. Apparently, if you grab one, it basically gives you double jumping ability. Now again, there is no clue about the end game. There's not even an idea that that would be a power up or an ability in the game. So how would the player know that? And I know that fans will probably be commenting below. Well, you're just supposed to do trial and error. But the problem is, if you don't even understand what the basics of the game are, how are you supposed to know what, what you can and can't do? Especially in a game where death is very quick like that. One of the great things about the Soul series is that, while there are certainly a lot of death traps and things that can get you killed, death is only a minor inconvenience. Again, go back to the last bonfire, lantern, whatever, and that knowledge is then saved for the future. And I'm going to be working on a post and critical thought talking about why the Soul series, despite its difficulty, is still very accessible, even though those two words may not go together. But let's wrap things up here. So for those of you watching this, what do you think about this debate of how much do you tell the player? Should the player be given all the basic information they need to succeed? Is there any good examples or are there any good examples of games that have purposely left information out, leaving it to the player to find. Now again, some of the things that would not be examples would be something like the roguelike genre, where you'll have like items that have random uses or random purposes that you won't know until you use them for that game. Another example would be something like, I guess, Portal in which the fine art or the higher skill mechanics of using the portal to move around are more or less discovered through the puzzle solving. Again, that's not an example because all those tools are given to the player at the beginning and the game will casually or will passively teach you to, do, to make use of them. But again, this is a very tricky debate because some of the best and most challenging games leave it up to the player to figure out. Again, we can talk about games that specialize in min-maxing when it comes to just breaking the systems and the design to make the most powerful weapon, character, etc. The Disgaea series would be a really good example of that. But, like, Disgaea at least gives you some mention of what these rules are and even gives you a complete help guide to tell you what the systems and mechanics do. If there's there was no mention of that whatsoever, if you had no idea how it progress, that would be a different story. But with that said, thanks so much for watching today's Critical Thought. If you enjoy it and you're brand new, be sure to like and subscribe, and pitch your own topic in any of the comments. 
As always, be sure to check back for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. Till tomorrow, have a great night. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and of course share with your friends, it always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GWBicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon.